Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and before we get into this episode, I wanted to do a little PSA and remind you that I put out multiple shows a week of Old Time Radio Westerns. You can check them out by going to otrwesterns.com or looking up OTR Westerns on your podcast application of choice. We are releasing over 10 episodes a week so far, about 100 a month. So definitely want you to check that out. Again, otrwesterns.com and check it out. I also wanted to invite you to check out my sister podcast site, OT Netcast, and that's N-E-T-C-A-S-T. So O-T N-E-T-C-A-S-T, Netcast, otnetcast.com. We're currently releasing mystery genre shows, and this is shows like The Shadow, Escape, Suspense, and The Whistler. And we have plans on bringing other shows to the network for you guys to listen to. So it's my non-Western old-time radio channel that I can kind of do other genres that not only I like, but hopefully you would like too. You can check us out by going to otnetcast.com or searching O-T-N-E-T-C-A-S-T on your podcast app of choice. Now let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Gunsmoke. Original air dates July 22nd, 1956, and the title is Lynching Man. Gunsmoke, brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun smoke. Starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. man, Shelby? No. Looks like some kind of tenderfoot to me. Who else is camping a grove of trees cut no water? You have a little talk with him. He looks scared, Kringle. <laughs> Seen men look scared before. Hello, mister. Oh. Camped here all alone? Yeah. Scouting around for some homestead land. Good looking horse you got over there. He seems to be a good horse. He's all young. I think I'll take a look at him. Sure. What you men doing out here? Oh, you just ride around. We scout for things, too. Land? Uh-uh. <laughs> we ain't the kind of settle down to hard work like that. I had a little orchard back in Ohio. Raised apples. Yeah. Yeah, apples is fine. Wished I had one now. Hey, Kringle. Yeah? That there horse ain't got no brand on him. No brand? It washed off crossing the river. You talking about washed off? It did. I ain't lying. <laughs> well, it don't matter, huh? Go get your rope, Shelby. I'll get it. What's he need a rope for? Well, now, don't you worry about that, mister. We'll take care of everything. What are you going to do? I told you not to worry. 
Now, look, uh, I ain't done nothing. Of course you ain't. We're just going to save you from all that hard work you was planning on. No. All right, I got it, Shelby. Hurry up. Stand still. Let me go, will you? Maybe there's water in this grove, Mr. Dillon. Well, if there is, somebody's dug a well, Chester. Oh, you been here before? I've passed by. I swear I'm going to start toting me a water bag. <laughs> That's the easy way, Chester. I bet it is. Yeah, somebody's had a campfire here recently. Mm. Yesterday sometime, I'd say. Yeah. That big rain last night washed out all the prints. So... It sure did. Oh, God, there's got to be a spring here somewhere. I'm going to take a look. You're wasting your time, Chester. I don't mind. I never saw a man who needed the comforts of home more than he does. Mr. Dillon? Mr. Dillon, come here, quick! Huh? Look. Yeah. Lynched. Scared me half to death. I seen him hanging there. It isn't a very pretty sight. If there ain't no horse around. Where's his horse? Yeah, he probably stole it. And then they caught up with him and took it back. Who do you suppose done it? I don't know. I don't know how we're ever going to find out. Now, oh, come on. Let's cut him down. And get him into the ground. <laughs> Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure. Because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild. Yet they satisfy the most. What I'd do if I rode into a grove of trees and found a man hanging there? Well, I hope it never happens, Kitty. Mm. How can men do such things? Oh, it's easy for some men. I hope you catch him. I'd like to, Kitty. Who was he, man? Oh, we found an envelope on him. Yeah. His name was Hank Blennis. Must have been a newcomer. I never heard of him. Well, he wasn't wanted by the law that I know of. But I guess he was a horse thief, all right. They wouldn't have lynched him otherwise, would they? No. Then why don't you find out who's had a horse stolen recently? They wouldn't likely be talking about it now, Kitty. Well, things could be worse, Matt. Oh, what do you mean? Suppose there wasn't any law at all. Then people wouldn't even have to hide what they do. Now at least they know they're doing wrong. Well, that doesn't seem to stop them much. (laughs) Marshal Dillon... Ah, uh, yeah. My name's Charlie Drain, Marshal. Uh-huh. I run cattle up north on the Republican River. 
Happened to be in Dodge on business, and I heard about that lynching yesterday. Uh, you know something about it, Drake? I know I don't like it. My own pa was lynched, Marshal. A mob strung him up by mistake. I was just a boy, but I seen him do it, and it's laid in my mind ever since. Uh, yeah, I can understand that. But, uh... What about this lynching? It's a big thing with me, Marshal. I can't endure seeing no lynchers get off free. Well, I don't like it myself, Dren. Then you do something about it, or I will. Now, Matt. Maybe you better tell me what you got in mind, Dren. A fella named Gil Mather. Got a little ranch over on Dove Creek. I've heard round and about that he's had a horse or two stole recently... And I've heard that he's talked to hanging whoever stole him. Now, it looks to me like he went and done it, Marshal. I know, Gil Mather. Well, then maybe you better go bring him in. Or you will, huh? I'll see him dead. I told you how I feel about things. I ain't fooling, Marshal. Drain, I got some advice for you. Is that so? Why don't you take a walk around Dodge and talk to some people, huh? You ask them what I'm like when somebody tries to crowd me. Then you go sit down somewhere and think about it. You think about it real hard. Now, I didn't know Gil Mather was married, Mr. Dillon. He isn't, Justin. Well, then who's that boy in the corral yonder feeding his horses? That's Billy Drisco. He works for Mather off and on. Mather will fight. I'm not arresting him, Chester. I got no evidence says he did it. Well, what if he admits it? And it's not often a man admits to a crime, Chester. Mm, guess not. Hello there, Marshal. Chester. Oh. How are you, Mather? Oh, fair to Midland, Marshal. What brings you out here? I was told that you lost some horses. I didn't lose them, Marshal. They were stole. Three of them now. Any idea who's been doing it? If I knew, there'd be a man hanging from a limb, Summers. There was one, Mather. Why? About 20 miles north of here, a man called Hank Blennis. Was he a horse thief? Probably. Who hung him? Now, some people think maybe you did. No. No, it wasn't me. But horse thieves has got to be hung, Marshal. Mather Blennis was lynched Thursday. Where were you then? You questioning my word, Marshal? Where were you? Marshal, you got any evidence, you come arrest me. Meantime, I got work to do. Contrary, ain't he, Mr. Young? Yeah. It sure looks to me like he's hiding something. Well, I can't arrest him for that. Come on, let's get back to town. <laughs> Doc. Doc, you asleep? Huh? Who, who said that? Oh, oh well, oh. Oh, it's you, man. <laughs> you uh, sure don't do much to dress this town up, Doc. Oh, what man's got a better right to sit out here and rest his eyes for a few minutes? Oh? I was up the entire night nursing old Mrs. Jackstone through a fever. Well, maybe we ought to tie a sign on you explaining that, Doc. Folks might not understand otherwise. No, folks can go hang. I'm here if anybody needs me. Well, a man would have to be mighty sick to need a doctor who looks like he's sleeping off a drunk. Don't harp at me, Matt Dillon. From what I hear, you're not exactly distinguishing yourself at your own trade. <sighs> well, you got me there, Doc. <laughs> yeah, you bet your life. And since you admit it, then I won't say any more to Well, me. good. <clears throat> Even though it does kind of look bad when people can go around stringing up anybody they please and with no interference from the law... Uh, yeah, well, thanks for not saying any more about it, Doc. Oh, I'm not one to twist the knife. Now, you know that. Oh, sure. Marshal Dillon, <clears throat> I want to talk to you. Uh, what's the trouble now, Drain? I'm tired waiting, Marshal. Something's got to be done. 
Drain, why don't you go back up to your ranch and leave all this to me, huh? Because you ain't doing nothing, that's why. You see them two men over there, Marshal? What? Them two standing over there. Well, who are they? One is Kringle and one is Jack Shelby. And they feel as strong as I do about all this. All right, Drain. You don't have to go back to your ranch. I don't care where you go, but you get out of Dodge and you take your friends there with you. If I see any one of you around after sundown, I'll throw you in jail. I take it back, joking you, Matt. You are kind of up against it. You know, Doc, I just thought of something. Eh? What? That fellow Blunnis was obviously a dude. He wasn't even wearing the right kind of clothes for a man who'd been out here very long. Maybe he wasn't a horse thief at all. Then why would anybody lynch him? Well, I'm going over to the stable, Doc. Maybe Moss Grimmick can help me. the fellow, Marshal. That's him. That's what he looked like. What kind of a horse was it, Moss? A little three-year-old bay. Real young, but plum gentle. Had four white stockings, Marshal. Yeah, that gives me something to go on. There's another thing, too. That horse wasn't branded. What? Well, I raised him myself, and I just never got around to put no mark on him. Except for no good stuff I bought. What stuff? Oh, a fellow sold it to me. Some kind of chemical powder. You wet it and then kind of paint your brain down with it and suppose to take the hair off. But it don't work. I tried it on another animal. It just washed right off. Yeah. And whoever's got that little bay of yours could put his own brand on him, huh? I'm a real fool, Marshal, believing you can brand a horse rubbing a little chemical powder on him. <laughs> well, we all get taken sometimes, Moss. I stopped Gil Mather from getting took, though. Oh, you did? Yeah. He come in here the other day and asked me about it. I told him. What day was that, Moss? Thursday. Him and the boy, Billy Driscoll, they come to town every Thursday, Marshal. Come in early, spend the whole day. Why? Something wrong? Hank Blennis was lynched Thursday. Well, you wasn't thinking Gil Mather done it, was you? Charlie Drain was, and he still is. I better go find him, Moss. Say, where are you listening to Gunsmoke? In your car? Getting ready for dinner? Oh, I see. Just relaxing in your favorite easy chair. Well, I'd say you're in a good spot right now to really enjoy a Chesterfield. You see, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild. Yet they satisfy the most. See nobody around at all, Mr. Dillon. Maybe they're in the house, Chester. Want for me to go see? I will tie up here by the barn first. All 
Could be Mather and the boys eating their dinner, Mr. Dillon. At least you hope so. Well, any man gets a little hungry now and then. Wait a minute, Chester. Why, there's Charlie Drain. Yeah. They was in the barn. Them other two fellows, they must be Kringle and Shelby you told me about. Yeah, that's them. What are you doing out here, Marshal? I'm looking for Gil Mather, Drain. He ain't around. Chester. Yes, sir. See if he's on the barn. I said he ain't around, didn't I? Go ahead, Chester. Yes, sir. Then don't any one of you try to stop him. Now, which one of you is Kringle and which is Shelby? I'm Kringle, he's Shelby. Why? Now, it's my job to know who people are, that's all. Well, now you know. Yeah, now I know. If you ask me, it's your job to punish criminals, Marshal. You're right, Drake. Well, you ain't been doing very good at it. I'm kind of slow sometimes. You're too slow. Mr. Dillon! Mr. Dillon, they're in there. Gil Mather and the boy, both of them. Don't stand in front of me, Chester. They're dead. These fellows went and hung them, both of them. Keep your hand away from that gun, Pringle. Well, you can't blame me. Me nor Shelby. It was Drain's idea. He paid us to come along with him, is all. Billy was just a kid. Why'd they have to hang him for So he was a kid. He was keeping mighty bad company, now wasn't he? Drain, both the boy and Gil Mather were in Dodge the day Hank Blennis was lynched. Are you sure of that? There are witnesses. I don't want no more part of this. Come on, Shelby. Hold it, Kringle. Well, you ain't stopping me, Marshal. Is that your bay horse over there? With the four white stockings? What about it? It's pretty smart of you to lynch a man rather than shoot him when you go to steal his horse. What are you saying, Marshal? They hung Blender Strain. I guess they figured helping you with Mather and the boy would put everybody off their track. So they lynched him. They done it. Why, you dirty no, dogs! Please! Why, he killed them. He killed both of them. Sure, I killed them. They had it coming now, didn't they? Give me that gun, Trent. I said, give it to them. Lynchers. All the time, there was nothing but a couple of dirty leechers. He's crazy, Mr. Dillon. I hate them. What do you think you just did in the barn there, Drain? I made a mistake. I can't help that. I only wish I could have hung these two. They deserved it. Just like them fellas that lynched my pa. I ain't never seen a man so mixed up. I hate lynching. Sometimes a man can hate too much, Drain. <laughs> Sometimes I can twist him till he gets where he doesn't really belong. I don't know what you mean. Well, it doesn't matter now. Not anymore. In a moment, our star, William Conrad. When you shop for those last-minute vacation items, don't forget to pick up a couple of cartons of Chesterfields. You'll find it mighty convenient to have a carton or two along in your suitcase, or if you're driving, right in the glove compartment. Chesterfield packs more pleasure, more vacation pleasure, because it's more perfectly packed. So buy Chesterfields. Buy them by the carton. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, on the frontier, bullets cost eight cents apiece, so they were seldom wasted. But next week, it's a stray bullet that kills a man. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke, produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, Harry Bartell, Lawrence Dobkin, John Daner, Jack Moyles, and James Nusser. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Ch-
change to L&M. Yes, have an L&M. No other cigarette you can buy, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white L&M Miracle Tip. Through the modern Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern, smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on gun smoke. This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening. <laughs>